At the VIS, we look towards nature to find solutions to the challenges in healthcare and the environment. And so when we wanted to build diagnostics and, and biosensors in any way, we looked at the cell. And the cell can be very good at sensing its environment. So the engineering solution here was to take the machinery of a cell, embed it into the cellulose matrix of paper to create a paper-based platform that's programmable for diagnostics and sensors. So our paper-based platform provides synthetic biologists now with a very rapid and cheap means to basically prototype and test out new circuits. One such example that we utilize in the paper-based is a toehold riboregulator. The Toko Switch provides a powerful platform for computational design of a complex uh, biological circuits based on fundamental biophysical principles. The VIS is very good at promoting collaboration from people in different scientific and engineering fields. And so the toehold switch was very good at detecting RNAs and bacteria, but we really wanted to open up the possibilities of the technology by moving it outside of the cell. And the paper-based synthetic gene networks presented the perfect opportunity to do this. With Ebola emerging as a global health crisis, we thought that combining our two technologies together would enable a proof-of-concept system to detect the Ebola virus. In under an hour, we can determine between the Sudan and the Zaire strains. And we also developed sensors that can detect antibiotic resistance. In the lab or the field, you can take an array of these reactions. And once we add the sample solution to the array, we wait 30 to 60 minutes to see if uh, we have a positive reaction or not. What's going on during this reaction is if the target RNA from the sample is present, it's going to interact with our gene switch, the toehold switch, and activate it, allowing for an enzyme, reporter enzyme, to be expressed, which results in that color change. The toehold switch and paper-based genetic network are uh, something very demonstrate how collaboration can facilitate uh, the, uh, the development of a great science technology at least. These efforts brought together my lab, which has expertise in synthetic biology, with Peng Yin's lab, which has expertise in RNA and DNA structures and dynamics. Scientists working in different labs can freely communicate and collaborate and identify and the follow up opportunities that emerge as the interface of both labs. And by bringing those two groups together, we we're able to advance new insights on RNA structures as well as make major advances in synthetic biology. And I, I don't think the results that we present would have been possible without the two groups coming together.